Okay, so let us kick off. So for the agenda today, you can see if we are talking about more on the design for the P2P, you know, how we're going to set up, what is the application that we run. Then later on, I will show you some of the demo, okay, for our new, uh, those card ma management called the CWMF200. So overall for dealing, okay, we have a one-stop total solutions. Okay, on the left-hand side over here, you can see that we able to support the remote side. Okay, you can set up the DWM321, 312, okay, VPN back to the HQ. Of course, the HQ, we can set up the firewall. We have the DFL870. Then next security solution over here, we have the L7 security gateway. This one allows you to see all the HTTPS traffic inside your networks. Okay. Followed by we have the core switch. Okay, the core switch we have the Jesse, we have the data center switch. Okay, we have the DXS three six hundred series, and next we have the distribution layer. Of course, is the DGS three three uh, three six three zero or the three one three zero. Okay, next for the hardware controller on the AP, as you can see, I highlight is the DWC two thousand. Okay, it able to manage all our DWL series. Okay. Then for the indoor Wi-Fi solution, okay, we have all we have Nucleus Connect, Nucleus Cloud. Okay, we, we have the uh, hardware solutions, okay, DWC. Then next today topic, okay, to today one will be more on the P2P. So it's on the right hand side itself. It's our DAP F series. So before I kick off, okay, we just go through one more time. Okay, for the first one on the right hand side is our hardware controller. It manage all our DWL series. Okay, maximum 256, depending on you got custom together or not. Okay, so next we will, we will have the Nucleus Connect. Okay, Nucleus Connect, we can support 1000. Okay, the software you need to install yourself. Okay, it's a free software, support up to 1000 AP. Okay, the AP series is called a DAP. Okay, DAP. Next, of course, over here we have the Nucleus Cloud, is our DBA series. Okay, for this cloud, okay, the cloud wireless controller will be able to manage unlimited AP. Okay, but of course, you will need to get the license, okay, per year, three years, or five years. And today's topic, okay, will be the P2P, is our DAP F series, okay. It will be able to support, okay, for the software itself, right? The software able to support up to 100K, okay, 100K, but it's really depend on the software specs. Okay, it depend, is it i7 or those server specs called, you know? So again, Nucleus Connect, okay, it's a software that the, the customer will need to host it, okay? Everything is free. You can download, then they can install inside their network. Next will be the Nucleus Cloud. Okay, is the wireless controller is inside the cloud. Then followed by the hardware, okay, the DWC series. And lastly, today topic, okay, the outdoor AP P2P. So what kind of application will use P2P or P2MP? Okay, normally for a Singapore project, okay, we our one is more on the CCTV, okay, those IP camera. They got different side, temporary side. Okay, they will need to create, uh, they, they, they need to get all the IP camera view, the live view back to their central. Okay, so, but they cannot lay the cables, you know, you cannot dig the, the fiber on the road, those kind of thing. Okay, so they can use our P2P solution okay, to do the bridging. So all the site will bridge back to the HQ. The next, some of the project at encounter is more for buildings. Okay, for example, two buildings across the road, Okay, they don't want to get uh, one more ISP on the office and they want un everything under one management, very easy to manage. So they can do the P2P across. So the other side can just come back to the main office and go internet. Okay, next, okay, we have the smart city. So for, for example, some of the country, you know, those town is very far away, okay, very small. They can use this to broadcast the wireless to, you know, a, a small city or even a small town. Okay, so before you start P2P, what is the uh, important things to take note? Okay, the first thing, the first thing, most importantly is the line of sight, okay, the LOS. Okay, without this uh, line of sight, the throughput will drop, there's no signal, you know, a lot of things will happen because, because I encountered issue on one of the project. 
Okay, during the site survey, I, I, I saw everything is okay. So we put an AP there. But after a few years, uh, after a few years, the tree grew taller. Okay, the tree grew taller. Okay, it just cover, it just cover the AP. So the customer call and complain, hey, why my signal so weak? Keep on having this connection. Okay, unable to see all the CCTV across another site. You know, those kind of things will happen. So make sure when you do the site survey for the line of sight, it's very, very important. Okay, next will be the range. Okay, you need to uh, see what's the range. You can recommend the correct EP with the correct antenna. Next, of course, we are talking about P2P outdoor AP. So we need the AP uh, IP rating. Okay, those 66, 67, those kind of things. Then next, okay, we have the frequency 2.4 or 5K. Normally, customer will ask, hey, which one is better? But uh, the first proposal, I always will use 5G. Okay, because 5G will give them a higher throughput. Okay, higher throughput, but but the distance is short. Okay, the distance is short. So compared to 2.4, you can go further, but 2.4, the speed is not that high and a lot of interference. Okay, so depend on the customer application, see what they require. Uh, they require a lot of bandwidth or not. If not, they can just fall back to 2.4. But just take note, 2.4, very easy to get interfere because the channel is only 1 to 13. And the, the channel that you can use is 1, 6, 11. You're not sure that the, the rest of the environment, the other AP will eat, same channel as you, or those kind of things. So it's, it's very, very uh, depend on the environment itself. Okay, next, of course, throughput, you will need to calculate. For individual site, how many cameras, for example, will need to come back to the HQ? So you will need to roughly calculate what is the required bandwidth, uh, what is the, the, the AP that we propose, is it suit for this project or not? Okay, so when you calculate the throughput, please, please uh, for example, there's around 20 camera. Okay, each of the camera may use up uh, two to four megabit per second, two to four, uh, but default should be two. Okay, so 20 times 2 equals to 40. Okay, 40 megabit per second. That is what uh, this bridge required. Okay, but when you do the calculation for the bridge uh, board rate, please, uh, please get it double. For example, if it's required 80, you just make sure the board rate is 160. Okay, why? Because normally the AP, sh the AP show you the board rate. Okay, board rate, you still need to divide by 2. Because the board rate is not the actual speed okay, for the wireless. So you need to divide by two, you need to divide by the environment, those kind of things. So in case for this bridge, okay, they need 80, play safe, okay, play safe. Try to get 433, okay, 433, at least one times one AC, okay, 433. Any question, guys, please feel free to ask me. Uh, because I cannot see my chat group, uh, you all can just unmute and ask me question, no problem. The next Wi-Fi protocol, okay, we have the AC, we have the N, of course, for the first proposal, okay, I will always recommend AC because higher speed, you know, you, the, the, the customer can enjoy speed and uh, no, a, a, lot, a lot of IP camera to go through those kind of stuff. Then next we have the QoS, okay, we can adjust the QoS to allow the video or voice to go through first. Then antenna, okay, what type of antenna should we use? Is this AP able to install the external antenna? We need to get a high DBI, those kind of thing. Then lastly is the mounting, okay? So before we start anything right, okay, first most important thing, you need to get the floor plan for the customer. Okay, you need to see the area, you need to see the environment. Okay, how you going to place your AP. Okay, next, you will need to identify which AP to use. Okay, we have a lot of uh, series. We have the P2P, those kind of thing. You need to identify. Next, we will proceed on to the POC because you will pinpoint which of the area to put the AP. We will go down to the site survey to test it out. Is it working fine? Is this the correct location? Is there any interference, those kind of stuff? But I can tell you 90%, uh, 90%. Okay, you go down you sure need to do fine tuning okay, because environment play a part. Okay, some of them, you know, the environment not good, a lot of interference, you run this channel, all the things die. So you need to do fine tuning. Okay, next, okay, fine tuning finish, the result is good, okay, then you can start the implementation, okay, the AP install, those kind of stuff. 
So for P2P, okay, there's a challenge to deploy. Okay, first, like I say, line of sight. Okay, the longer the distance, uh, the longer the distance, the faster zone, uh, this, this, this area, right, will be taller. Okay, it means that it will increase like this. So this one is very, very important. In case if, uh, if, if you pull the distance, okay, for example, 10 kilometers, the zone here will be very, very tall. In case there's a tree that enter this zone, right? There's a tree or any object. Okay, it will cause interference to this channel, guarantee. But the short term, the distance is, this one will be much more smaller. Okay, guys, please take note, uh, this one is very important. So in case you want to put long distance, it is always recommend to put taller. Okay, taller a bit, taller and the distance can go far. Remember, uh, next alignment. Well, wow, this one also very important because a lot of site survey uh, we, we, we ran down, we will make sure we can get the correct bulk rate. For example, the AP we use two times two. Two times two, the bulk rate is 866. We will try to get the settings and uh, the, the result as 866. So this is very, very, uh, uh, tied to your alignment. For example, if you put like that, I can tell you your ball rate will be very, very low. Okay, this one also the same thing. Okay, it will drop. Okay, for example, if, if your one is two times two, it will drop maybe until one times one. So the alignment is very, very important. Okay, for directional antenna, the angle is very, very small. Please take note on this. So we will try to become the correct alignment. You can get 866. Six. Okay, I got the, the result. Okay, I, I got the real site survey. Okay, it's ready. We can reach 866. Six. Very, very high for the customer. Next, very important uh, site survey. Just now I keep talking about POC and site survey. So we will need to uh, make sure the AP location is correct. Okay, is it line of sight? Those kind of things. Okay, ensure the environment. Okay, once you place the AP, okay, you pinpoint the location. You need to make sure the surrounding, there's no other AP. Okay, if there, there is, okay, please change the different channel, you know, those kind of things. Please do not crash with another environment uh, factors. And of course, we need to test the result. Okay, you, you can run a few tests. You, you can set up the FTP server. You can download, you know, check the speed, what speed we can get, okay? So for the Wi-Fi site survey checklist, okay, we, we, we can see is it 2.4 or 5 gig? Okay, we have the tools for site survey. Normally it's M and N, okay, insider. Normally I will use insider or okay, the Wi-Fi analyzer. But but for example, some of the environment, huh, some of the site, the AP already mount, came okay, mount on the building. Okay, how how do we go to check the Wi-Fi, okay, the environment? Actually, you can go inside the AP itself. You just do the scan. Okay, you will be able to see your environment also. Okay, next, what type of adapter? Okay, for the site survey, please match it when you do the those wireless speed tests. Okay, then is it cover the area that you want? Is it the the correct distance? You know those kind of thing. Then of course heat map. Okay, to allow the customer to see you really got did your part. Okay, all the cut all the required area already cover. Okay, those kind of thing. Then those cover area, is it under a good antenna? Okay, good coverage, those kind of stuff. Okay, next for the interference, okay, we can see, is it nearby there's any interference, AP and all, you know, maybe change the wireless channel, those kind of thing. Then, okay, propose the correct AP hardware. Then lastly, what is the application they use? So this is more on the, and the Wi-Fi analytics analytic tools, okay, we have the insiders, okay, we have the Wi-Fi analyzer. So this one is more like the insider that run on the laptop itself. So you will be able to see your surrounding, okay, surrounding on the wireless channel they run, what is the signal strength. Try, try to change your wireless channel, not to crash with the, those very high, uh, minus 66, minus 50, those kind of thing. Try to get it, you know, if the wire channel is not inside, it's better. Okay, if inside already all the channel is full, try to match those that is minus 90. In okay, nine minus 90, maybe minus 80, those kind of, of channel. Because the bigger the number, 
hit, the weaker the signal strength is. Remember this, huh, guys. So next will be the Wi-Fi uh, analyzer that is inside the mobile devices. Okay, normally I will use it. Okay, the, there's the one difference between the Android version and the iOS. Okay, for iOS, you cannot see this part. Okay, for iOS, because you know they lock the thing to a, a lot of difficulty. So for Android, you will be able to see a lot of stuff. Okay, there's a difference uh, between iOS and Android version. So next we will talk about antenna. Okay, antenna is very important. So of course, if you get the low DPI, okay, around eight, of course the angle is very huge, but but the distance is very short. Okay, next you get a 14. Okay, the distance will be far, but the angle will drop. Okay, so just now we talk about alignment. This alignment is very, very important if you get a very high DPI. So for example, 24 only seven degrees. So you need to really get line of sight and you need to adjust the alignment. Okay, for the opening directional is normally we say 360. Okay, 360, yeah. The higher the DBI, the smaller the cover, the, the over shape is, but of course the distance will increase. Okay, you can see the distance increase, the height is reduced. Okay, so for 12 dpi, it's a bit different. This one is shorter. The distance is shorter a bit. The height will be longer. Okay, the 9 dpi is like that. Okay, please take note, uh, guys. So this one, normally for backhaul, uh, point to point, we will not use the directional because 360, the distance is not that far. Okay, normally we will use directional antenna. Okay, for AP, do broadcasting to client. Then we use this one. Okay, only direction for 360. Okay, so this is some of the uh, scenario. Okay, we have the point to point over here. Okay, this is called the multiple point to point. So in between here, you need to pull the LAN cable. Okay, so most of my project that I done is under this scenario. Okay, under this scenario, because this is the first one that I will recommend customer to do. But of course I did face some of the customers say that, hey, I don't want to use so many AP. I want to save costs for my project. You know, there's a budget limit, those kind of thing. So in the end, okay, you can use this one, point to multi-point. One AP to two AP. Okay, this is what we call PTMP. Okay, but please take note on one critical part. For example, if your this AP is uh, 866, okay, you will need to divide by two, 433. Remember, uh, 433, very important. It will divide by two. Please take note. Nah. So when you calculate what is the requirement bandwidth, you will need to do some calculation if you use PTMP. Okay, guys? <coughs> okay, so next, okay. So during the POC, sometimes you will encounter issue. For example, eh, my signal very weak. Or even, eh, I ping halfway, why keep on dropping? Sometimes it's due to interference. So there's a few solutions to it. Okay, first, of course, you need to use the Wi-Fi analytic, okay, those site survey tools okay, to see your environment. If your channel is crashing with another channel. For 2.4, remember guys, the channel is one, six, and 11. These three are, these three will not cross over to each other. Okay, for five gig, you are safe. For five gig, all the channel is, will not cross over to each other but you will need to select those channels that is not used by other people on the 5 gig itself, okay? So in, even you change the channel, still cannot use, right? The last result will be changing the location. You want to change the location, okay, the result will be better. Okay, sometimes if you change the location, still bad, okay, do restart the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi site survey again to check the wire channel, those kind of thing, and change location again if, possible, okay, if possible. So this one, okay, for our model, okay, we have a few types. We have the P2P and PTMP. So take note, uh, for this model, 3704, we can support PTP and PTMP. For this, like a dish shape, okay, the dish one, remember, cannot do PTMP, okay, for the dish one, because this one is a higher DBI, so the angle will be smaller. So it unsuitable for PTMP. So we have this 3705. 
So here is the wireless end solution. Okay, take note. Huh? Next below one will be the higher one, will be the wireless AC okay, solution that running on 5 gig only. Okay, 5 gig. Huh? So we have the 0 to 3 kilometer, we have 0 to 5 and 0 to 20. Okay, most of my project, I use this one. Okay, some of the success case, huh? I run this one. Very, very good. Okay, the customer got impressed by the 866 result. So when he do the speed test, those kind of things, right, we can go over 200 megabit per second. This one very, very good, huh? okay? So this is the model, okay? We have the 3704, 3705. Remember, it's an end solution. For the AC, okay, we have the 3711, 37, uh, 3713, and 3712, okay? For 3712, it's zero to 20 kilometer. Okay, this one is the N solutions. Okay, so for the N, okay, it's the wireless N up to 300 megabit per second. So the antenna, okay, the is a 10 dBi, 24 dBm power output. So this one, uh, take note, uh, for this N series, uh, the lamp port is only fast E. Okay, please take note, it's only fast E. So for all the mode, okay, you have the AP mode, P2P, P2MP mode, WDS mode, okay, or you can set it, okay, and even the repeater mode. These four actually is the same thing, huh, guys. Okay, actually it's the same thing. When you see inside the mode, huh, these two don't have, only here. Okay, WDS, AP, or WDS. Okay, please do huh? then IP65. Okay, next, we have the dish one, okay, the wireless N, okay, up to 300 or so, but you can see the DPI is much more higher. Okay. Only one, uh, only one FE POE port. Okay, support all the modes. Then IP66, okay, up to 10 kilometer. Okay, next will be our AC solution. Okay, only five gig, uh, only five gig. So for the first one, okay, up to 867. Okay, the antenna will be much more smaller. It's 15 dBi. Okay, we have the 2GE port. Okay, it's an IP66 up to three kilometer. Next, this one is a bit different. This one you can, okay, you can get your own external antenna to increase this one, the DBI to higher. Okay, but default, it will just give you 17 DBI. Okay, one GE port, okay, one GE R, the IP66, okay, up to five kilometer. And please take note, this one require PoE plus, but luckily all the dealing switch, okay, is running on PoE plus. And lastly, our 3712, this one, 867. This one have a high antenna, okay, 23 dBi. Only one GE port, okay, support up to 20 kilometer. Okay, 20, yeah. So this is the backhaul solution. Okay, we have the side-to-side, -side, okay, means PTP or multiple site solution. Okay, you can set up P2P. Then some of the area cannot, you can just do the PTMP. So for next will be the outdoor WIFS solution. What is WIFS? It's like a wireless internet service provider. Some of the country, for example, like Philippines, Indonesia, okay, they have multiple islands. Okay, the islands do not have internet, you know, very hard to lay cable, those kind of things. So some of the service provider, they will be able to do the PTP, okay, to broadcast the Wi-Fi okay, to the homeowner. So we have a different base station. Okay, we have the smaller one. Okay, for example, if the building is very, uh, uh, the height is not that tall, okay, you can use this type of antenna. Okay, next, we have the higher one. Okay, if all the building is very high, this kind of thing, of course, you need to get another type of base station that will be able to do multiple angle, okay, able to project and cover more area. Okay, next technology highlight. Okay, so, so for our DAPF series, okay, we have some of the technology. Okay, first we have the DTMA plus, okay, allow you to having a high throughput, low latency and anti interference. Okay, inside there's one option, once you turn it on, okay, once you turn it on, it will totally, it will totally just kill everyone. Okay, for example, you just select wireless channel, maybe 49, for example, the rest, the rest of the AP that is not belongs to you, okay, connect to this channel, Okay, they will encounter interference. Okay, for our one, 
no issue at all. Okay, we have this kind of technology. So this one can only work okay, when you set up PTP or PTMP. Okay, next, okay, we have the calculate distance automatically. It will always make sure that you can get the high uh, baud rate. Okay. Okay, next for this one, we have the cloud base. It's called our CWM F200. Okay, it's a cloud wireless controller. Okay, cloud can support up to 100K. Okay, 100K. Yeah? So next, okay, we do support all the China bandwidth. Okay, uh, the 20, 40, and 80. Then lastly, we have, of course, we have the QoS functions. Okay, this one is our CWM F200, okay? So what it can support, okay, it can support multiple tendency account. So you can create your own local admin to handle their own AP. Then we can do the central wide, uh, firmware upgrade. Okay, we have the syslog, okay? Then you, you have the online map, not just online map, okay? You also have the offline map, you can do it. So for the captive portal, okay, no, no matter it's local database or radius, okay, it do support, but okay, but it do not support social login. Okay, currently you only can do web and WeChat login. Okay, it will ask you to key your WeChat account, those kind of thing. Okay, so this one is a cloud base, okay, able to manage all the P2P or PTMP AP. So you will be able to see the status of it. Okay, what AP is tied to this master AP. Okay, you also can see it very clear, clearly. So this one is the, the dashboard. Okay, you will be this, uh, you will be able to see the status. Then on the right hand side will be all more on the, the map. Okay. Then AP profile later on I will show it to you all. Advertisement. Okay, this one very interesting. Huh? Um for our models, okay, the other models we do not have this this these functions. Okay, for this, uh, for this DAP F series, okay, we can use advertisement okay, inside your captive portal. Okay, this one very interesting. Then next, of course, we have the access control. Okay, for the demo, before we go inside the demo, let me go through some of the training slide. Okay, I already created okay, the account uh, using this public IP, okay, using this. So you all can just go in and take a look. So how are you going to add, for example, if you got project, okay, uh, how are you going to add your AP inside this cloud, okay, the CWM F200? First, of course, your AP, okay, your APR must have internet connection. So when you set up, of course, you don't put in just the static IP, okay, please, please, uh, also put in the gateway, otherwise the AP unable to go to the, to the cloud, okay. Okay, next, sell out your 2.4 and 5 key, those kind of thing. You want to be a bridge mode, also can. You want to be an AP mode, also can. Okay, you can just set it out for 2.4 and 5 key. Next, inside the AP itself, there's one option called a CAPWAP. Okay, that one, you need to click on it. Once you click, you need to put in the cloud IP address over here. Okay, remember, must put in. Okay, once you put it ready, it will tie to the cloud, but of course, the CWL F200, you need to do another steps. Okay, what is the step? You will need to put in the MAC address, okay, of the AP. If you never put in, the software will not be able to capture the AP itself. So inside, okay, inside the software, the CWL F200, you will need to put the MAC address over here. Okay, just key, just tie to the account. Okay, after that, you will be able to see the AP is online. Very easy, okay? So how are you going to set up the template? Okay, very simple. Just go inside the cloud, we have the VAP template. This place, later on, I'll touch more on this. Okay, it's the place that allow you to set all the authentications. Okay, you can set whether you want the web authentication, you want the WeChat or the SMS. Of course, for the WeChat and SMS, you will need to put in their server, those kind of settings, the public IP address, those kind of stuff. Okay. Then next, you can do some management. Okay. You can do some ACL control, the map, okay, or by the account, or you can do the bandwidth control. So, okay, you can enable what is the full control, those kind of stuff. Then lastly, this one. Once you successfully already log in, you want to connect to a website, you know? of course, you can put in this one. Okay, once successful log in through the captive portal, you will pop up that page. Okay. 
So next, okay, we have the basic template also. So for this software, it's very funny, okay? You need to set up from right-hand side first to left-hand side. Remember, right to left. Okay, so now it's the basic template. You can set up the channel. Okay, what is the mode that you want to run? What is the weave? Those kind of thing, okay? Then lastly, okay, you will need to set up the main template. Okay, you need to put in what, which AP to tie to. Okay, you know, those kind of thing. Well, next, okay, once you see everything set up already, you can see everything is online. It will follow which kind of template, okay, it will show over here. In case, you know, you, if you encounter anything, you can just right click more, then you can edit, okay, or even delete or reboot the AP itself. Okay, here, of course, you, you can see this is how they select the template to match with the AP. Just like you create a lot of AP, okay, you can tie to it. You can change the AP template anytime you like. Okay, just apply, but of course, the AP itself will get disconnected. And you know, you know, those kind of things like power on and off. Okay, once okay ready, okay, it will show the correct template. Okay, I will talk, touch on on the captive portal itself. Okay, how you gonna do it? So to on the portal and the radius, you actually don't need to do anything. By default, the AP already enabled by default, except the software itself. Okay, don't need to do anything. Okay, next for ACL. Okay, for example, you want to block this IP address. Okay, does not uh, allow this client to go. You know, using this port. Okay, you can sell the ACL. Okay, next, of course, you can do some rules to it. Okay, we have the whitelist. Whitelist means that you can allow the client to go through without doing some authentication. Or you can do some access control by the MAC address, okay, the Cathy Portal account, or even by the SSID. Okay, so this one will be more on the account creations, okay, for the Cathy Portal. You can create the name, the password, followed by the email. Okay, next, of course, how you're going to enable the captive portal is just how what we saw. Okay, it's the web authentications. Okay, over here. Just take note. So once you enable ready, you want to connect, okay, you will be able to see their captive portal page. Okay. After that, finish already, it will just relay you to what, what website you access or which jump site that you set. Okay. Anything for me for the software? If no, we just go to the success case. After the success case, I will show you the live demo. Okay, so this one is what I talked about the Facebook, okay, the Facebook site. Okay, they have three areas. Okay, first, this one will be the HQ. Okay, HQ. Okay, then worker area followed by the construction site. Okay, so between these two areas, okay, we created okay, the antenna. Because the distance are, the distance is around 300 meter. Okay, 300 is not that far, it's not that far. But when we first use 8710, okay, for this model, we do encounter some of the problem like intermittent disconnect, those kind of things that we, we, we happen. Okay, because the tree grow taller. Okay, the tree are uh, the tree cover the whole 8710. So we have no choice over here. We have to shift one of the AP back, back to the uh, to the backyard, you know, further away. Because between these two distance, okay, is actually around 200 meter, around 200 meter. But due to the tree, you know, the environment, those kind of thing, we have no choice to change to this model and shift back 100 meter away. So it will become 300. And the bulk rate we get is 866 exactly. 866. So we do a speed test, it's around 300 plus megabit per second. So it's very, very impressive. Okay, for this, this one is a success case uh, for Facebook. Next, we have success case in India also. Okay, they use the AP to do the PTMP. Okay, for the CCTV, as you can see, okay, it will do line of sight. Okay, they mount it on the building itself, okay, uh, across the city. Okay, to manage all the IP cameras. Okay. Next, this one will be in the Philippines. Okay, I think this one is Philippines. So you can see, okay, they have the project on the P PTP. Okay, point to point. You can see, 
for some of the area, for example, like city hall, okay, they have that there, there, there's a few city hall, okay, they can cross over okay, PTP around. Then we can do the AP for broadcasting. Okay, the, for the broadcasting, they use the DAP 3666. Okay, you all can see. So for back hall, they use PTP. Okay, some of them, okay, for some of the area, they can use PTMP, one AP to multiple point. There, all is the same, okay, for broadcasting, all use DAP 3666. 